was so very brief. Will you lift me in prayer right now? Abba, we come to you in this holy, holy, holy night. And we ask today, this is my prayer today, that each person in this room, in the name of Yeshua, will hear the message straight from the Holy Spirit in a way that they can understand it. Can we ask today together that each person will be ministered by the Holy Spirit in this room? Amen. Will you agree with me in prayer right now? Amen. 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 I want to talk to you for a moment about some fear that I have. How many of you know that the glory of the Lord is coming back here? Now, you know, when we think about the glory of God, we always get this warm and fuzzy feeling, you know. But the book of Malachi says some people, the glory will be so powerful they get burned. It's going to be burned. And for some people, it's going to be like a soothing fire that will heal them. So, you know, when we pray for the Lord, we say, show us the glory, God. And now I'm praying actually for something else to say, God, just give me a little bit of the glory. I'm a little scared here. How many of you don't want to experience the glory of God in your life? Shavuot is a day that we are commanded and we are called to remind it that we have a date with the mighty one of Israel where he called us to experience the glory. How many of you in the room are married? How many of you remember your first date? You know what was one, my, one of my first dates with my wife? I made her this beautiful food. I didn't know how to cook. So what I did, I bought a spaghetti. One of those giant spaghetti. I was a college student. And accidentally, what I've done is I put the spaghetti and somehow a piece of glass got into it. So as we are eating, she said, that's kind of crunchy. What do you put in it? Extra seasoning? And I looked, oops. See, part of the jar is in the spaghetti. But let me tell you something about this first date. This first date was glorious date. And God wants to remind us today how glorious it is to meet him. He say in the scripture, in the psalm, Ta'amu ure'u kitova donai. Taste me and experience me and know I'm good. How many of you know God, God have a taste? You know, it says that the children of Israel walked through the desert and they got manna. You know what the sermon said? That for each person, the manna tasted differently. So if you like ice cream, it tasted to you like ice cream. If you like pork chop, no, no, it wasn't pork chop. If it was lamb chop, it tasted to you like lamb chop. But for each person, it tasted. Because you know what? Our God is a personal God, isn't he? Isn't he a personal God? Amen? How many of you want to meet tonight a personal God? And I know we are scared of this. Last time I met you, just it seems like last year, but it was just yesterday. I told you that there is a prayer that we pray as Jesus says. Messiah, we know where Messiah is. He's sitting at the gate of Rome. And we call upon him and say, come back, come back, come back. I told you why we call upon him to come back. Because we need second date. How many believe? Can say with me now, say with me. God is a God of second date. Come on, come on, say it with me. God is a God of second date. He's not a guy God will give you. He's not a casual daters. God likes to be in it for the long haul. He wants to marry you. Hallelujah. He's not a first dater. He doesn't want a date. He's not a casual dater. Thanks God for that. But you know, there's a twist to the story. I want to give you a passage you might have never seen from Ecclesiastes 9. And today we remember this. Look with me with this passage real quick. It says, in, there was a, this is in Kohelet, in the book of Kohelet chapter 9. One of the most incredible verses. It says, there was a little city and a few men were within it. 
and there came a great king against it and besieged it. Now there was a found a man in this city. He is poor and wise, but this by this wisdom delivered the city. Yet nobody knew this poor man. Listen to what the rabbi say. Who is this city? What is the city represent? The city in Corleta is none other than Zion. Who is the man in this story? The man in this story is none other than the Messiah of Israel. And why nobody knew his name? Because he was casted out outside the city. How many of you believe that it's time for the name of Yeshua to receive back honor? Honor, honor, all honor for Yeshua. All honor for Yeshua to the Jew first for every nation, every tribe, every time. Yeshua name need to be restored We've been talking all weekend, beloved, about battle and a war and a spiritual, or spiritual army that God is building. I am telling you today, Yeshua is a prisoner. The real Yeshua wants to come out. He wants to have the greatest coming out party. And Shavuot is his coming back party. How many of you want to party for the mighty one of Israel today? I want to show you an amazing passage in Ecclesiastes. You might have never caught that before. It says, better is a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who doesn't know how to receive an admonition anymore. For out of prison come for the king. Even in his kingdom he was born poor. I want to ask you today, is it time for Yeshua coming out party? Yeah. Who do you think is going to set the party? It's not going to be me. It's not going to be Rico Corsair's David Public. It is going to be us together, the body of Messiah. Jews and Gentiles are like coming together and say, you are coming out. You are coming out. We need to know, the world needs to know who is our king and who is our masters. And Shavuot is the day to do that. So the question today that I want to ask you, perhaps something to consider in this holy night. How do we bring this beautiful document, this Torah, the Lord of the Torah, Yeshua. How do we bring him back to life? I got to tell you a story. I was, uh, I was in a, where was I last? Malaysia, Indonesia. Oh, yes. I was in Rome. So when I was in Rome, we have done a revival. We have established the very first messianic synagogue in Rome. And there was something really, really cool that happened there. The Vatican sent a representative. And you know, he walked into my session and he said, Greeting from Rome. Greeting from the Pope. I'm not joking with you. That's what they say to me. But you know, when he shook my hand and he said, Greeting from Rome. I didn't sense a warm and fuzzy feeling that he really meant greeting from Rome. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, he was writing every word I was saying. But then we decided to do something really cool. We donated our very first scroll, Torah scroll, to a Messianic Jewish synagogue in Rome. And let me tell you something that happened. It was a so honoring event. So we decided, oh yeah, let's have a revival. Let's not stop there. Let's take the scroll with this Torah. Let's take it outside to the street. Come on, let's have a party in the street. Why do it in a hotel room? So we were walking in the street, starting to do the party. And then something unexpected happened. A revival broke out in the street. And very much at the same moment, a revival broke out in the street. So we start dancing kind of like we did here today. Half an Aguila in the streets of Rome. And I want to tell you something in the spirit. It was very obvious in this point. Some people in the street started to join us. There was a real revival. But as some people have joined us, stones started to throw stones at us. 
say, get out of here, you crazy Jews. We are from Palestinians. We are not friends of the Jews. There were only two camps of the people there. Those who say, have an Aguila, and those who start throwing stones at us. Darkness is looming. I've been talking about this all throughout the weekend. Darkness is coming, and it's coming hard. But hey, hey, wherever there is darkness, light will overcome. Darkness, light will overcome darkness. When Yeshua, who is the Lord of light, you know in Hebrew the word light is all. If you take the numerical value of the word or in Hebrew, you get the number of 207. If you take the word in Hebrew, and soft, which went without beginning or without end, it's also equal to 107. How many of you know that Yeshua light is infinite? Darkness is finite. Light is infinite. How many of you believe that? And here is what it's saying about those last days. It's saying, very famous passage in Amos. It says, in that day, I will raise up the tabernacle that David, of David that has fallen. And I will close the branches thereof. And I will raise up the ruin. And I will be, build it in the days of old. So, listen to this. We usually stop there. So that they may possess the remnant of Edom. You were talking about honor and shame all week. Guess what? What is happening to the Jewish people coming back to the nations? The honor is coming back home to Jerusalem. And I can't wait there. And you will be there, be there or be square. <laughs> the question that the rabbis have asked, what is this fallen tabernacle of David representing? And listen to this answer. It will blow your mind. It says there, I quote it from one of my heroes, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. And he says, have you heard when the fallen son will come? He is asked, who is the fallen son? Mashiach, answer Rabbi Nachman. And the Messiah you call, and to the Messiah you call a falling son? And he answered, yes. For it is written, on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which is fallen. Rabbi Isaac answered. Thus said Rabbi Yochanan, in the generation in which the son of David will come, scholarly men will decrease. That's exactly what happened in the world right now. Darkness is going everywhere. We see no hope, but we have hope. There is hope. Am Israel Chai, Yeshua Chai, God of Israel is alive today and the one who is going to restore it is not some sort of a giant sukkah. Yeshua, honor is going to be restored. Because he is king of kings and he is lord of lords. You know in Quellet number 9, he says his name in Hebrew is a miskin. You know what a miskin is? It's like you come to somebody. Let's say I see Rico and I say to Rico, hey, Mr. Nobody. That's who Yeshua is today to the Jewish people. But then nobody is going to become the hero who saved the city. And I can't wait for this day. So the question become today, how do we, we already established it throughout all the wicked. You, whether or not you like it, you're in the army now, right? We already recruited them, David. We settled all of that out, right? You are in the army. So the question for Shavuot is how do you fight? And by the way, is it okay to us to be scared? Let me tell you something. When I went to Malaysia, and I went to the one that go and doesn't look like Osama bin Laden in the line. And he looked at me, and he says to me, what kind of name is Shapira? And I say, it's international. <laughs> Let me tell you something, my heart was beating. My heart was racing. I can see myself with Al-Qaeda. But you know what? God promises our irrevocable. Can we say it together today? God promises in this holy Torah our irrevocable, amen? So how, what are we are to do in the last days? Isaiah 60 gave us this answer. 
It says, and you might even know this song, Kumi Ori, Ki Baorech, Ukvod Adonai, Alaik Barak. Kumi Ori, Ki Baorech. How many of you know this song, right? Really a sweet song, right? Sweet song. How many of you think, Barry and Batya Siegel, friends of mine, how many of you think it's a sweet song? Very sweet. Wrong. Not sweet at all. Have you read the next verse? Come on, look, look at what in the next verse. For behold, darkness shall come over the earth and gross darkness over everything. But upon thee the Lord will arise and his glory will be seen upon you. This is a picture of where we are today prophetically. Cover Darkness cover everything. How many of you sense it in their spirit today? That everything is covered in darkness. But guess what? There is a redeeming factor here. Look with me for a moment. I'm going to show you something absolutely amazing in this scripture. Here is the way that we are to battle the darkness. You know, the rabbi says to us, when the children of Israel received the Torah... Everything was light. There was no darkness. There was a split second in human history that there was no darkness. How many of us like to get back to this original condition? And I can tell you today, we can get back there today. If we allow to us, not tomorrow, today. Isn't it good to know that Shavuot give us a do-over? How many of you want do-over here in the room? Come on. I want a do-over. I want a do-over. So let us break it down for a moment and look what the, I even color coordinated to you. It says the first thing that we have to do as we are battling darkness, the very first word that is used here in the, in the text is the word kumi. Can everybody say with me kumi? Please understand that kumi in Hebrew, kum, is not like hey. If you like get up of bed today, you can do that. Delvav in the middle of the word kumi means that is a commandment. Which means, I'll paraphrase you, get your tuches out of bed. <laughs> Come on, can you say it when you get it? But actually, that's not exactly what it is. That's just me paraphrasing, Judaize it a little bit. But the word kum in Hebrew literally means resurrect yourself. Believe in the power of resurrection. How many of you today believe in the power of the resurrection? When there is resurrection, write yourself a little meta question. When there is resurrection, there is light. Amen? Where there is a resurrection, there's a light. Now listen, the first thing it says, arise and shine. When you proclaim Yeshua Mashiach to be Lord and Savior, it doesn't mean that your problem is over, but here's what it's mean. It's mean that there's a tiny light inside of you already. Gling, 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 gling. That's the beginning point of finding the, the, finding the darkness. The second thing that is happening, it says, because your light has come. Now, please understand, when you say yes, you're sure, you have a light inside of you. It's not the light, it's a light. But as you start walking toward Yeshua, the living Torah, something else is coming into you. The light. How many of you today want the light? I don't want a light, I want the light. How many of you want in the room today the D light? There are two different lights. One come when you just proclaim the resurrection. And remember Yeshua met the paralyzed man. And what the first thing he says to him? Oh, go do the horror. No, he said to him, kum, proclaim your resurrection. Proclaim your resurrection. Some of you telling me in the room, and I'm so tired of hearing it. You don't understand my baggage, my background. It doesn't matter. Yeshua has taken this upon himself this, this holy day. By the way, in case you wonder, I'm not really a Jewish rabbi here. I'll prove it to you. I'm more like a Pentecostal preacher tonight. All right. Look, no tzitzit, it up. Because 
because here's the way, the reason you're doing it, because the darkness will cover. What I'm trying to tell you today, the only way we will not get the darkness is if we are covered in the light. If we are not covering the light, darkness will take over. And I know that we don't want the darkness. And we are covered in light upon you. The glory of the Lord will appear. There are three questions that I plead with you to ask in this holy night. Question number one, why should I arise? Question number two, how do I rise up? And the question number three, the most important one of all. This is good. I'm, believe in me, stay with me for five minutes. It's going to change your life. How do you know when the glory of the Lord is upon your life? How many of you want to know today if you live a life that is filled with the glory of God? Come on, raise your hand. So here's the answer. Question number one. Why should we arise? Here is what the rabbi says, and I quote my favorite rabbi, Kliyakar. Kliakar says, the verse speak of King Messiah, Kumiori. As it is written, there will I make a horn to shoot up of David. There have I ordered a lamp of mine to be anointed. As it is written, arise and shine. Let me tell you something. The faster that you and I figuring it out, the quicker we are getting it together, the quicker the Messiah will return. Please understand, he is ready. But he's not going to come back until the bride is ready. Amen. Come on, are we ready to get ready a little bit quicker? Come on. Paul is calling it the fullness of the Gentiles. But you know what he said earlier in the, in the chapter? He says the fullness of the Jews. Both, both groups need to become full of something. Not full of themselves, by the way. Full of the knowledge and the understanding of God. Why should we arise today? Why should you understand that you are taking part of prophecy tonight? Yes. This is prophetic what is happening here tonight. Because we are bringing Mashiach back. Yes. Yeshua cried out in Matthew 23. It says, oh Jerusalem. Jerusalem, how oh, I long to gather you like a hand that gather a chick. You are unwilling to do that. Your house will stay desolate until you say together. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Please understand, the faster we are going to work through all those things, the faster he's coming back. And I don't believe he's coming to the Jewish people and to the Gentile, to the Messianic town. No, we have one bride. This bride is Israel. And anybody who wants to be part of Israel, you have a place. You have a place. But come on over. Let's not overcomplicate the matter. Sheesh, we spent too much time on that. So the second question becomes how. Now we know why. Question number two is how we are to rise up. And here, the beloved Evan Ezra, one of our greatest rabbis, give us the answer. And he says this. The answer is given us in the word, kumi ori, arise and shine. He says that kumi means that the first thing you have to do is on a daily basis proclaim the power of resurrection. In a minute, you will have a chance in this holy night to proclaim the power of resurrection. Yes. How many of you ever visited Israel, by the way? Once? How many of you ever been in the marketplace in Israel? Yes. And you know this in Ben Yehuda Street, when you walk into the market there, right? Yes. There's the guy that, we, that stand and he sells the bagel and the yes. oranges. Yes. And you look at those bagels, they're nasty. Because they sat there from the day before. I believe he was there from the day of Yeshua. <laughs> but if you tell this man that his bagel is not fresh, I promise you, you wish you never. You go and buy 100 bagels and ask for, rep you will repent. And you will make sure that you buy. Because he believed, he believed that this bagel is authentic. He believed that his bagel is a resurrected bagel. <laughs> Do you believe?
believe today that our God is a resurrected God? Let me tell you something. Yeshua without resurrection mean nothing. A believer without resurrection mean nothing. A Torah without resurrection mean nothing. You can preach at people. But if you have not experienced the resurrection of Yeshua Mashiach, it is nothing. I want the nations to come to Torah. But you know what I want from you more than coming to Torah? To live a resurrected life. Come on. The second thing he says is Ori. Kumi, arise and shine. What does it mean to shine? Here is what Yeshua says. In that way, the same way, let your light shine before others. That they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Ori has to do with the recognition Please listen to this word, recognition of everybody around you in the world that say, wow, he's resurrected. She is resurrected. He is returned. I want what they have. I want what they have. I want what they have. Let me ask you today a question. Are people recognizing what we have? Or they look at us and say, oh, those are messianics. They are crazy. They are messy. We don't want anything that they have. Shavuot is a day for us, not just to remember the covenant between us and God, but make a covenant to our Father and say, we're going to go out there to the world and we're going to make you proud. Yeah. I wonder if you want your dad to be proud in this room. Yeah. Number three, how do we know when the glory of the Lord is upon us? I want you to listen to one of the heroes of Judaism, how he explained the words and the glory of the Lord will be upon you. You might be a little bit shocked. I was shocked when I read it for the first time. Here is what Matthew David said. You know that the glory is upon you when the Holy Spirit, the Shekhinah, revealed to you and being induced into you. Let me say it again. You know when you get the glory of God? When you have something going into your vein and induced into you. It's something that is connected to you. And it's specifically what is connected to you is the Holy Spirit. Shavuot is about the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to give you a chance to receive the Holy Spirit. How many of you want to receive the Holy Spirit? I need the Holy Spirit. And the reason I need the Holy Spirit and you need the Holy Spirit, we want to live a life that is filled with glory. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Almost done. So the real question of Shavuot, the greatest day in Jewish history is the question how do we receive the Holy Spirit? How do we go and receive the Holy Spirit? Did I ever tell you the first time I walked into a Messianic synagogue how weird it was? People do this. And I said, what is this imaginary window? What's up with that? I don't see the window. And the next thing I know, I'm doing this too. And I have no idea why. So the question of the holy day of Shavuot is not how do we receive the Torah, but how do we receive what the Torah really holds inside of it. And here's what the Torah holds inside of it. The Holy Spirit. Hello? The Torah was not given for the sake of Torah. The Torah is given to the fact that God will dwell and live inside of us. Here is what happened. Let me tell you a little Jewish story from Exodus 20. It says there, and the people stood here. This is when we received the Holy Spirit as a nation. And it says, and the people stood far off. But Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. 
I want you to pay attention to a few very interesting things about this passage. You have three parties in this story. You have the people, you have Moses, and you have God. And I want you to notice something. It says that the people stood far from God. Okay? The word there, far, does not mean physical distance. Please understand that. The Hebrew word rachok meant that they didn't want to deal with God. They had a spiritual distance from God. Moshe did the exact opposite. He approached the darkness. I want to tell you today a message. Don't be afraid from the darkness. Through Yeshua, we can approach darkness and overcome darkness. And a matter of fact, let me deal with each one of those groups. Because you and I can take today the role of the people... Or the role of Moses. Listen to what the rabbis tell us about the people standing far. Absolutely amazing. Here, Ora Chaim, our one of our beloved commentators, said, If God will speak with us, we will receive his ruling. For now, we receive it from Moshe. So it is needless. Why should we take the risks as he declared that you said? You see, the people were not willing to take a risk. What I love about this Shavuot conference, more than any other Shavuot conference, that we have taken a risk, David, to deal with darkness. How many of you believe that we are to be risk takers in building the kingdom? Come on. If you want to play it safe, go to another army. But you know what happened? The second the question you have to ask yourself, because the next thing that happened, Moses went into the darkness, and what did he find into the, inside the darkness? God. The Holy Spirit was found inside darkness. And the question you must ask yourself tonight in this holy night is why God revealed himself inside the darkness. Look what the Devin Ezra said about Moses. I challenge us today to take the mantle of Moses and the second Moses. Look what it says. Amazing. On Moshe, on the words he stood far off, Rabbi Ezra says, Moshe did the exact opposite to their action. They were running from the darkness and Moshe approached the darkness. Do you want to find the Holy Spirit today? You better approach the darkness. And let me tell you something. When Moses approached the darkness, something actually happened that you don't read in the, in, in the Bible, but our commentators tell us that it wasn't a regular darkness. He had to go, the rabbis tell us, through not one, not two, but three layers of darkness. And each layer of darkness was darker than the other one. Here is the oldest commentary to the Torah known today, known as the Mechilta. Let me read you to this. The Mechilta says that there was a fog in the inner partition barrier. Darkness on the outside, cloud in the inside, and in the middle there was some sort of a dense, dense fog. And guess what happened inside the darkness of the darkness? Moshe met God face to face in the darkness. Why is it important? You see, because if you take the Hebrew word that is used in Isaiah 60, darkness, right? Darkness cover everything. You know, Hebrew is a very interesting language. Each letter equivalent to a number. It's called gematria. Hebrew is a mathematical language. It's a scientific language. The Hebrew word for darkness equals 385. Get what, guess what the Hebrew word for the Holy Spirit equal to? 385. 
If we are to experience the glory of God, we have to learn how to go to the darkest, most ugliest, most terrible situation. And right there, God will meet us with his power of his resurrection. If we want to become Torah observant, that's what it means to follow the Torah. To follow the Torah does not mean to go to an easy situation. Beloved, can I be honest with you? It wasn't easy for me to be here this week. But I'm sure glad I'm here. Because I believe the glory of God is here. Because we walk into a difficult situation. And God said, if I walk to dark situation, I will bring the light. What about you today? Are you willing to be like Moses? Are you willing to take the Torah today? Go to the mountain of the Lord. Not where it's comfortable. Not on your seat. But go to the darkness to meet God face to face. Or you want to stay with what I call the Tuchus ministry. <laughs> I call this today the final battle for your mechitza. Those three words will change your life. Kumi, proclaim your resurrection. Ori, shine. Kadima, march to the darkness. And the Holy Spirit will induce into you. Well, we can say, here, here's the shocker of this entire story. We can say, well, that's Moses. I, may, I ain't no Moses, as they say. Moses can do it. I can do it. Let me tell you, Moshe Rabbeinu, although in his greatness, he was a man of flesh, just like you and I. Let me show you something absolutely amazing as I'm concluding here. It says in the text, and Moses drew near, near. I want you to pay attention to the Hebrew. This is absolutely amazing. Do you see the text says, Moses drew near. The word there in Hebrew, drew near, is the Hebrew word nigash. Everybody can say with me, nigash. Nigash is not the normal, normal word for us to draw near. The Hebrew word to draw near is the word gash. So how come? It says nigash. What, Moses had too much to drink when he wrote the Torah? What, he added an extra letter? God forbid not. The word nigash is used there because in Gematria, the word nigash is equivalent to two names. Michael and Gabriel. Please understand what I am telling you today. Moses didn't want to go to the darkness. He actually was running away from the darkness, the rabbi tell us. It was the angels who came and they kick him in the tuches and say, Moses, get in there. Get into the battle. As as you get into the battle, you will find the Holy Spirit of God. Because the Torah, he will induce you with the Spirit of God. You might not believe me. I know it's hard to believe that about Moses, right? There you go. So what is the upshot today? And in a second, can you bring the worship team here, uh, uh, David? I want to give you three kingdom principles to welcome the king and welcome his Torah into your life. Principle number one, run towards when everybody else run away. Can we say it together? Yeah. Run towards when everybody else running away. Ask the Lord. You want, you want to do an experience? Ask God when you wake up in the morning, God, give me opportunities today to be used to further your kingdom. You'll see what's going to happen in your life. Your life will be changed. Your life will be transformed completely. Number two, believing and proclaiming the power of the resurrection. No, no, I don't think you understand. Believing. 
Somebody came to me to say, said to me, bless me. I said, why do I need to bless you? You are already a new being in Yeshua HaMashiach. You don't need a rabbi to lay hand on you to tell you that. Believing today and proclaiming the power of the resurrection. And then number three. Come on, worship team. Help me out. Move, move, move. We're going to work together. Come on. Number three. Make a commitment and a new covenant with the God of Israel today to take upon darkness. Come on, who wants to take upon darkness with me? You see, when you do those three things that I highlight to you, we called it being born again. Being born again. Proclaiming your resurrection. Willing to take upon darkness. And last and not least, run toward the prize. And the prize is the Spirit of God. So here's what we're going to do today. I want to do something. Where are you, Enrico? Take out the Torah, please. Please take out the Torah right now. I want the Torah open right now. As you hear the ten words. These ten words. Quickly, quickly, guys. Start playing something. Quiet. Nothing crazy. I know the, 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 the you, you give a Spanish guy a microphone, they go, they go wild. Something calm. Calm, calm, calm. Have mercy on me. I want to ask you today, who is feeling today that he cannot affect or come to darkness? No, 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 no. Rico, in front of the people. Where can they smell it? They can see it. Can we open it? No, no, open it with him to the ten words. Who wants today to take upon darkness? Come on. Come on. Who wants to take upon darkness? I promise you to get to leave this word, you're going to have to go through darkness. But in the middle of the darkness is the greatest power. The second glory of our living man of Israel. And how good it is for you, the nations. This is given to my fathers. And now you can partake in this. Every word. You can receive the same spirit that I and my people can receive. The same spirit. It is one spirit. There are not two spirits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Wake up. Wake Come up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to hear the word. Oh, slow, slow for a moment. Slow, slow. This is going to be slow, worshipful. I know. But here's what I want you to do today. Listen to me. We're going to first hear because faith comes by hearing. We're going to hear those 10 words. If God is calling you today and you feel that you want to be born again. Listen, don't come up here if you're not willing to do those three things. Please, save God and save us the time. But if you're willing today, you said in your spirit, I want to be married to this word. We're not going to wrap you in Taurus. Don't worry. We're not going to do anything crazy. But I, I give you permission, I think it's very Jewish, to come here and point to the word and take your finger and kiss it and put it on your heart. It might take us a while, a minute or two to do this, but I believe today some of us need to be resurrected. God of Abraham. God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the army of the Lord will succeed because the word said, Behold, my servant will be highly exalted and he will prosper and he will be very high and he will be lifted up. You know, you wonder who the servant of the Lord is? You and I are the servant of the Lord. You and I are the servant of the Lord. 
I speak right now. I just feel in my spirit to rebuke any word curses, any spirit who speak to you that say you will not overcome, you will not succeed, you will not try. I rebuke them and I say you will, you will, you will. Because God says I will, I will, I will, I will. In the name of Yeshua, we come today and we proclaim victory, victory, victory. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid of the darkness. I will overcome it. I will succeed. I will try. Now listen to me as you come forward. If there is any area of your life today, if it is finances, if it is relationship, if it is in your personal walk with God, that you feel that you need a little induction of the Holy Spirit. How many of you need a little Holy Spirit in them today? You know, come forward. But don't do what the people do. Don't do this. Oh, I'm scared. Stay. Be still. And they'll know that Adonai, who I Elohim indeed. Hear those words. A little down, just for a minute. Can you play? וידבר אלוהים את כל הדברים האלה לאמור אנוכי אדוני אלוהיך אשר הוציא אתך מארץ מצרים מבית עבדים לא יהיה לך אלוהים אחרים על פניי לא תעשה לך פסל וכל תמונה אשר בשמיים ממעל ואשר בארץ מתחת ואשר במים מתחת, מתחת לארץ לא תשתחווה להם לא תעבדם כי אנוכי אדוני אלוהיך אל קנה פוקד עוון אבות על בנים על שלושים על רבעים לשונאי ועושה חסד לאלפים לא אהבי לשומרי מצוותי לא תישא את שם אדוני אלוהיך לשווא, כי לא ינקה אדוני את אשר את שמו לשווא. זכור את יום השבת לקודשו, ששת ימים תעבוד, ועשית כל מלאכתך, והיום השביעי שבת לאדוני אלוהיך. לא תעשה כל מלאכה, אתה ובנך ובתך, עבדך, אמתך, בהמתך, גרך אשר בשעריך. כי ששת ימים עשה אדוני את השמיים ואת הארץ, ואת הים ואת כל אשר בם, וינוח ביום השביעי. על כן ברך אדוני את יום השבת ויקדשו. כבד את אביך ואת אמך למען יאריכון ימיך על האדמה אשר אדוני, אדוני אלוהיך נתן לך. לא תרצח, לא תנאף, לא תגנוב, לא תענה ברך עד שקר. לא תחמוד בית רעך, לא תחמוד אשת רעך, ועבדו, ואימתו, ושורו, וחמרו, וכל אשר לרועך. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, I am asking right now, I am interceding for every man. for every woman, for every child in this place to receive the Holy Spirit in this great, 
and awesome and wonderful and holy day. I want to be born again through the Spirit so I can write these words upon my heart and they will be put upon my lips. You are the Lord of new beginning and tonight is my new beginning. Tonight is your new beginning. Tonight is Israel's new beginning. It is Israel's new beginning. So what is in the past we put under the blood that take to put together this call. The blood of the precious lamp. So if you want to die Tonight is a divine invitation. Forget theology. Forget definition. Forget the nonsense. If you want to be the people of the book, all what you have to do tonight is come forward and touch and point and be born again. I'm going to ask the worship team to worship in power as the people come forward. But please, as you come forward, just make a way so other people to come forward. And don't leave. Let's stand. And I'm going to ask those two men of God to raise it up. Yeshua is to be lifted up. Can we raise it? I know it's going to be heavy for a few minutes. It's even like this. Make your way up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, don't drag feet tonight. Don't drag the feet. Make a way to somebody else. Let us not be selfish that everybody can touch. Everybody can be restored. Everybody can be healed. Everybody can do it. Come on. Everybody have equal access to the Word of God. Come on. I want to give voices of angels above. Singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, not beside. Make a way, make a way for people to come closer. Make a path, make a way, make a way. If you need healing tonight, if you need to be touched by the Lord, come forward. God will touch you. I promise you, God will touch you tonight. Make a way, make a way, make a path. Come on, come on. Glory to the Lord. Glory.
let's do it a cappella. Come on, let's raise the voices to the king. Come on, let's do it louder. I hear a voice in my spirit today, right now. Maybe it's something I've never done before in Shavuot, but I want to do it. I feel the urge to do it today. You might don't feel like you need my blessing, but as a Jew today, actually I'm going to ask somebody, every Jewish person who know that they are Jewish, by belt will join me in the stage right this second quickly 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 every Jewish person yeah. every Jewish person hallelujah hallelujah well we have a million of Jewish people let's look at the Lord a hand hallelujah 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 and here's what we're going to do are you ready here's what I want to do you focus on this side of the room. 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 I want to release blessing, a blessing upon my brothers and sisters and the ministries here and every pastor and every teacher and every shepherd and every person who comes back home to the family come on let's extend our hand how about we thank you for this holy Torah I thank you for Moshe who stood up and passed it to our father 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 and today we say we give it to you this is a gift from God to you welcome to the family in the name of Yeshua, we say to you today, Baruch Abba Beshem Adonai. Welcome, welcome David, welcome Rico, welcome everybody to the household of 